Hey guys! Today we'll be talking about the different Python operators. We will be focusing on arithmetic operators, assignment operators, comparison operators, and bitwise operators. There are other operators like membership operators, identity operators, and logical operators, but we'll focus on these for this video. Okay. Let's get rolling! First, let's look at the arithmetic operators. Arithmetic operators are used with numeric values to perform common mathematical operations. The first operator we are going to be looking at is at the addition operator, which is just the standard plus sign. So, let's just do a random test to see if that works. We will add 2 and 5, which gives us, of course, 7. We can also assign numbers to variables and add them too. So, we can assign A to, let's say, 22.5, and B to another random number like 15.75. Then, we can say we want to add A and B, and that will give 38.25. To subtract, the operator is the standard minus sign. We can test this once again and do A minus B. So, in other words, 22.5 minus 15.75, uh, which, of course, is 6.75. Now, let's go on to the multiplication operator, which is the asterisk. It's the little star above the 8 on your keyboard, and you press Shift 8 to get to it. This is the operator for multiplication. We can see that once again, by multiplying A times B, we get the multiplication answer, which would be 354.375. We could do a simpler example, like 2 times 2, which would guarantee equally 4. And we can see that that is the, the sign for multiplication. Exponentiation will just be the use of two asterisks and not the caret that you might use normally for exponentiation because that is actually a bitwise operator. We'll get to that later. Let's do an example, simple example of 2 to the power 3. We can see that it gives 8 because 2 to the power of 3 or 2 raised to 3 is equal to 8. To do division, we use one slash. If we divide A and B once again, then we can see that we get this long float, or in other words, a decimal, which is probably never ending. Who knows? Let's try something more simple. Let's divide 6 and 2 which, of course, is equal to 3. But, what do you notice? Well, you can see that it returns 3.0, which is a float. This is because if you use only one slash, it will always return a float. If you want to return an integer, then you have another operation, which is called floor division, or integer division. What this does is it returns only an integer, even if the answer is supposed to be a float. So now, when we do 6 divided by 2, we do it two with two slashes, because that's the notation for integer division. And what do we get? Well, we get 3 without 3.0. If it is a float, if the answer is a float, what it will do is it will round the float to an integer. 
but it doesn't round the decimals exactly the way we do. How we round decimals is dependent on the decimals and the number after the decimal. But what Python does is it just returns the integer value regardless of the numbers after the decimal. For example, let's integer divide 13 divided by 2. The precise answer is 6.5, however. As hu us humans would round it up to 7, but Python always rounds down to 6 or whatever the integer is. Even if the answer to 13 divided by 2 was 6.999999, it would still give the value 6. Okay, now you know what floor division and integer division is. Now, let's go on to the next operation, which is modulo, or in other words, a division remainder. The way to represent this operation is with a percentage sign. So 6 mod percentage sign 2 will be 0. Because when you divide 6 by 2, it goes into it without any remainder. It goes into it three times without any remainder. And 1 mod 2 is, sorry, 1. Because 1 goes into 2 zero times. Therefore, having a remainder of 1. Okay, now that we are done with arithmetic operators, let's move on to assignment operators. Assignment operators are used to assign values to variables. I already showed you an example of an assignment operator while talking about the arithmetic operators, as the equal sign is one of them. You can assign a variable to something like a string, integer, flo and float, and you can do it by using the equals operator. Let's make a variable equal to 7, in this case x. Now we can see that x refers to 7. Okay, but what if you want to add to the variable x in this case and make the result equal to x? Well, you could do x is equal to x plus whatever you're going to write, and then x will refer to 7 plus where whatever number you type. But there's a much easier way to add the value of a var of the variable and assign it simultaneously to the variable. How do you do that? Well, you can use the plus equals operator. Now, it may seem weird, but this is actually an easier way to type something faster. If you just want to add to a variable and simultaneously assign the value to it, for example, if we say x plus equals 2, it doesn't return any value to us, but instead it just adds 2 to the original value 7, and therefore x is now equal to 9. This is different from the plus operator, because the plus operator just adds to the value but does not assign anything to it. For example, we can say x plus 3, and it gives the value 12, but when we see the value of x, it still refers to 9. This notation works for the other arithmetic operators too. So you could have subtraction, uh, division, exponentiation, and all of those. They all work, even mod. Now, let's go on to the comparison operators. 
Comparison operators are used to compare two values. It returns a Boolean value, true or false, depending on the statement. We can check if a number is greater than another with the greater sign, like we can check if 5 is greater than 2. And to check if it is less than, we can use the less than symbol. To, to check if it is greater than or equal to, you use the greater than symbol and then the equal to symbol. And in this case, it's true because 5 is greater than 2. But when we use 5 is less than or equal to 2, neither of those are true. So that's why it's false. You can even compare strings because each letter has a unicode that you can find using the ORD function. For example, if we compare lowercase a and uppercase a, we can see that a, the lowercase a, is greater than the uppercase a, meaning that the lowercase a is greater than the big, the the uppercase a. This is because when we get the Unicode of both using the ORD function. We can see that the Unicode of A, the lowercase a, is 97, and the Unicode of uppercase a is 65. Therefore, 97 is greater than 65, and the lowercase a is greater than the uppercase a. But how do we check if something is equal to something else? We already used the equals operator for the assignment operators, so what shall we use for this? Well, we would use the double equal sign operator. This checks if anything is the same in other as the other and returns true if they are both equal and false if they are not equal. For example, compare A and A. We can see that they are true. But if we compare a a big uh uppercase a with the lowercase a then whoopsies I accidentally put the one equal sign so that's a big mistake because we're assigning one of this to one of this and you can't just do that because this is not a variable anyway if we compare uppercase a and lowercase a we can see that it is false because Python really values the capitalization and they're completely different if they're capital or lowercase they're different. How do you check if something is not equal to another thing? Well this notation is a little weird but it is an exclamation mark with an equal sign next to it. So let's see if uh, uh, uppercase A is, is not equal to a lowercase A. Well, what do you think? Of course, that's true, because they're not equal, as we saw here. So that's how you check if something is uh, uh, not equal to another thing. That's it for the comparison operators. Now, let's move on to the bitwise operators. Bitwise operators involve binary. If you don't know what binary is, then a brief explanation is that there are different number system that is in base 2, and that is only made up of two numbers, 0 and 1. The code you're writing in Python is processed into binary so the computers can understand the instructions you give it. Each digit, 0 or 1, is called a bit. So, bitwise operators are used to perform bitwise calculations on integers. Their integers are converted to binary format and then operations are performed bit by bit. The final output is returned in a decimal, base 10 format. The operators we are going to be talking about are the bitwise AND operator, 
the bitwise OR operator, the bitwise XOR operator, the bitwise complement operator, the bitwise left shift operator, and the bitwise right shift operator. Let's start with the bitwise AND operator. This bitwise operator uses an ampersand to represent this. The form to write this is x ampersand y. But what exactly does this return? The bitwise AND operator returns 1 if both bits are 1 otherwise zero. But what exactly does this mean? This means that if you have two numbers, x and y for example, and they are 5 and 7, the, f um, the first thing we would do is to convert this to binary format. So how do we convert 5 and 7 to binary f format? Well, let's start with 5. We know that binary is in base 2. So in the same way we go by 10 with 1s, 10s, 1000s, 10,000s, and so on with powers of 10, we can do the same with binary, as binaries go with, goes with powers of 2. So, there will be the 1's place, 2's, 4's, 8's, and so on. The zeros occupy the space that is not needed, and the 1's will occupy the space that are needed or used. In this case, 5 is equal to 2 to the power of 0, plus 2 to the power of 2, in parts of 2. That means that the 1's and 4's place should be occupied the one by the 1's and the rest should be occupied by the 0. The middle should be occupied by a 0. After the last one, you can put as many zeros as you like. It depends on how many bits you want. I'll just put one zero. So 5 is equal to 0, 1, 0, 1. And 7 is equal to 0, 1, 1, 1 with the same method. Okay, now the AND operator comes to play. Remember, it returns, bo uh, returns Turns 1 if both of the bits are 1 and otherwise 0. So let's compare the bits. For the first comparison, we can see that both of the bits are 1. Therefore, it returns 1. For the second comparison, it doesn't have the two bits as one, so therefore it's zero. The third has both as one, so therefore it's one. The fourth are both zero, so therefore it's zero. This binary format is equal to five in decimal format. And that is our answer. Now, let's go on to the next one, which is the bitwise OR operator. This is basically the same thing, but instead of returning 1 if both bits are 1 and otherwise 0, it returns 1 if any of the bits are 1. The operation for this is a vertical line. The next one is the ZOR, Z or XOR operator. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. This, once again, is the same method, except it returns 1 if one of the bits is 0 and the other bit is 1. If both of the bits are 0 or 1, then it returns 0. 
So for example, seven XOR eight is fifteen. And it has the up uh symbol um thingy which which that's uh, that's why it wasn't the exponential um operator. The next bitwise operator is called the bitwise complement operator. And it is basically the same thing as one's complement. The general way to write it is to use a tilde and write it as an integer after it. We'll try doing some complement operations in the IDLE shell. So what did you notice? Well, hopefully you noticed that it has been changed by one and also has uh, changed its sign. From this, we can conclude that the formula for finding the bitwise complement of an integer x is just negative x negative 1 or negative x plus 1 whole. There is a manual way to do this with two's complement and converting negative numbers into binary, but for the sake of the length of this video, we're just going to use this formula to solve complements. Okay, now let's go on to the next operators, which are left shift and right shift. The bitwise left shift operator shifts the left operand operand bits towards the left side for the given number of times in the right operand. In simple terms, the binary uh, in simple terms, uh, the binary number is appended with zeros at the end. So when I put the number of zeros I have to put at the end based on the left operand, I get my binary answer, which we can convert to base 10. Okay? So let's take 15 left shift 2 as an example. First, we convert 15 into binary which is 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, because 2 to the power of 0 plus 2 to the power of 1 plus 2 to the power of 2 plus 2 to the power of 3 is equal to 15, and then shift 2 to the left, or in other words, just put two zeros at the end. So when I put the number of zeros I have to put at the end based on the left operand, I get my binary answer which we can convert to base 10 as 60. So, 60 is our answer. Now, let's go on to the next operator, which is the bitwise right shift operator. Here, instead of adding zeros to the end, we remove how many digits the right operand tells us to. If we have the same example as before, we would do 15 right shift 2, then since the right operand, which is 2 in this case, tells us how many bits to remove from the end, we would remove the two ones, which would leave us with 0, 1, 1, which is equivalent to 3, our answer. Note that these methods that we are using are shortcuts, and for the actual shifting and for two's complement, there's some really good resources out there that can really help you understand the concept. These methods would probably good will probably be good for finding answers fast, though. One last thing I wanted to show you guys is converting from binary to decimal form and the other way around too in IDLE. To convert an integer to binary, 
we can use the bin function. For example, we can convert 10 to binary. But here we can see that this is the notation for binary thing. So um, bef whatever before this can be ignored. And this is basically the answer to it. To convert to binary, you will have to use int, the int function. But you can't just put 1010 and then convert that. You have to put 0b inside it and then convert it and put whatever binary you want to put outside of it. And then you will have 10. So that's a really cool way to do it. And, yeah. Anyways, I hope you liked the video and learned something new today. Have a wonderful day. See you next time. Peace out.